Hi there, in this video we're going to look at two template filters that are built into Django, time since filter and the time until filter. These can be applied to dates in your Django templates to give human readable messages to users regarding how long until or since a particular date. So we're going to see how to use this in this video. So let's dive into VS Code now. We have a very simple project here, it has one URL which loads up this particular view. Nothing is going on here, it just loads a template with a simple message saying hello. So we're going to extend this structure and we're going to start by building a model for the user. Now Django has a built-in user model, we're going to extend that using the abstract user class. And Django recommends that you don't use the built-in user model, you can extend it so that when you need to change that model later on it becomes easy to do so. So we're going to import the abstract user class and we're going to build a model here called user which will inherit from the abstract user. And because we're going to work with dates, let's create a date of birth field in this model. So it's going to be a models.date field. And we'll create this with null equals true and blank equals true. And this will allow us to create a user that doesn't have a date of birth. And that's all we need for this user model. Because it inherits from abstract user, it will already have all the default fields such as username and email. And here we're adding a simple date of birth field to the model. So you can save the models.py file and now we're going to go to our settings.py and we're going to register this as the auth user model. So let's scroll to the bottom and there's a setting in Django called auth user model and we set this to core.user which is the model we've just created. And this setting will tell Django to override the default user model that's built in and use this model here that extends from the abstract user. So once we've done that we can then run the migrations so python manage.py and it's going to be make migrations and once we've got the migrations we can run the migrate command which will then add the tables to the database. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this user model and we're going to register it in the admin.py file. So let's import from core.models the user model that we've just created. And once we've done that we can call admin.site.register and we'll pass the user model to that. And the reason we're doing this is because we're wanting to access and create a user in the admin interface. And in order to actually do that we need to create a super user. So python manage.py create super user. We'll give that a username of admin and a password of test. Now once we've done that we can run the Django development server and we're going to go to the admin interface and we're going to take this admin super user and we're going to actually add a date of birth to that user. So let's now go to slash admin and we can log in with the username of admin and the password of test. If we go to the users page here we can see the admin user that we created on the command line and we can then go into the admin user and if we scroll to the bottom here you see that there's a field for the date of birth. And that date of birth field is currently null, but I'm going to add 1990 05 04, so the 4th of May 1990. And if we save that, that will persist that into the database, and our admin user now has a date of birth. So now that we have an admin user, let's fetch that user in our view and return it to the template in the context. So let's go to views.py, and we're going to add this into our index view here. So let's create a variable called user and we're going to say it's user.objects.get and we'll get the user with the username of admin. And let's import the user model at the top here and add it to our context with a key of user. So we should now have access to the user in this template that's rendered and that's the index.html template. So let's go to that and replace this message here with the user and save that. If we now go to the page we should be able to see the user. So the default page here is just an empty string and we see the user's username, which is admin. So that's working fine, we've fetched this user, let's now create a table in HTML for this user's details. So let's go back to the template here and replace this user here with a table. Now I'm pasting this in here, this is nothing special, it's just a table in HTML, it's got a class of table so that Bootstrap will render it nicely. And there are three columns in this table, a username, a date of birth and an age column. Now we have the date of birth in the database, that's a field on the model. What we're going to do here to calculate the age is we're going to use the time since template filter. So let's see how we go about doing this. First of all let's do the username, that's very simple. We have the user object in the context and it's the username field on that model. The second field is the user's date of birth, so we're going to render that here in the second column, so it's going to be user.dateofbirth. 
and that's the field that we extended the abstract user class with here in the models.py file, so it's this one here. And the final field, if we go back to the template, is the age. Now we're gonna use the time since filter for this one. So let's go back to Django's documentation. And for the time since filter, you can see here it formats a date as the time since that date. So for example, four days and six hours. And it takes an optional argument that is a variable containing the date to use as a comparison point. And by default, the comparison point is the current date right now. And we want to use the default of now when we are doing this, so we don't need to specify an argument here. So let's go back to the template and we're gonna copy this line here containing the date of birth because we're gonna reference that. And then to the date of birth, we're gonna pass the time since filter. And that will calculate the time since this particular date, which is the user's date of birth. And it's gonna use now as a reference point so we don't pass an argument. So let's save this template and go back to the page. If we refresh this page, we should now see a table and you see that the date of birth is May the 4th, 1990. And we correctly get the age here, which is 31 years and 11 months. And we do that simply by using this Django template filter, which is called time since. So that allows you to easily calculate in a human readable way, as you can see here, the time since a particular date. So let's now see how to make this work with another date as the reference point instead of the current date. So let's now go to our models.py file and I'm gonna add another field to this user model and it's gonna be graduation date. Let's assume that this user has graduated from university and we're gonna copy this date field and paste it here. It's gonna be another date field. If we stop the server and run the migrations, you see that we've added that field and then we can run migrate to actually add the column to our underlying database table. Once we've done that, let's run the server again and we're gonna go back to the Django admin and we're gonna add a date for the user's graduation. So let's go to the admin interface here with the slash admin endpoint and the users here, this is the particular user that we're dealing with. And now you can see at the bottom, we have a graduation date. So let's now add the graduation date to the database and we're gonna say 2012-08 dash 10, let's say that, and save it to the database. Once we've done that, we're gonna go back to our Django template and we're gonna add two more fields to this table, two more columns. Let's paste them in there and format that properly. So we have now a graduation date and an age at graduation. And this particular field here is what we're gonna use uh, in a minute with the time since filter. And we're gonna see something new when we do that, we're gonna pass an argument to that filter. So now that we have those two new columns, let's fill them out here with some TD fields. So the first one is gonna be the user's graduation date that we've just added to the model. And that's gonna be graduation date. And the second field, let's copy this line here with the time since filter and paste it in here. Now, by default, that calculates the time since the date of birth. If we pass an argument to this filter, we can calculate the time since another date. So we're gonna do that now and we're gonna pass the graduation date here. And to pass an argument to a Django template filter, we use the colon here, the colon syntax. And the date that we're gonna pass is the user.graduation date. And that will then calculate the time since the date of birth with reference to the graduation date. So if we save that and go back to the template, you can see that the age at graduation is 22 years and three months. And that works by looking at the date of birth and calculating the time since that date of birth with reference to the graduation date. So it's 22 years and three months. And the way that you pass that reference date is as an argument to the Django template filter, as you can see on this line here on line 21. So very easy to do, very nice and very useful if you're working with dates in Django. And very often when you're building systems, dates are a key part of those systems. So that's all for time since, but we're now gonna see an example of another filter, and that's the time until filter, as you can see in the Django docs here. This is very similar to time since, but the key difference is it measures the time from now until a particular date. So this is useful for finding out how long until a particular event occurs or a particular date. And we're gonna see how to use that now. So let's go back to our Django template here. And we're gonna add one final column to this table and that's gonna be next birthday. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna calculate the time until the user's next birthday. If we go back to the page, you see that the user's date of birth is May the 4th, 1990. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hard code into the views.py file, the user's next birthday. So the first thing we're gonna do is from the date time module, we'll import the date object. 
and we're going to set a date here on line 8 and we'll call it next birthday and we're going to set that equal to a date object we'll pass the year as 2022 the month is going to be May so that's month number 5 and the day is going to be 4 so this corresponds to the next birthday I'm in the year 2022 when we're filming this so the user's next birthday would be May the 4th 2022 and we get that using this date object here in Python so now that we've built that, let's add it to our context here. So I'm going to paste this in here. We now have a variable called next birthday available in our context. So let's go back to index.html here. And at the bottom, we'll add another TD row to our table. And we can render out the next birthday here using the Django syntax here. So next birthday, if we save that and go to the template and we refresh, we see that the user's next birthday is May the 4th. But let's say we wanted to find out how long until that next birthday. What we're going to do here is use the time until template filter. So it's very simple to do this. Let's go back to the template and we'll specify the time until filter. So now if we save that, the birthday is in four weeks. So it tells us in a nice human readable way how long until a particular date. So that wraps up this video. We've seen the time since and the time until filters in Django. As you can see, very easy to use when you have date objects in your templates. And it gives a simple and intuitive way of telling users how long or how long since a particular event. And as I said earlier, in systems that you're building, you always have dates, you always have times. So these can give you a nice way to show how long until a particular time or how long since a particular time. Very convenient and easy to use. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.